society is the new electricity of the society. And how we treat the electricity, we just switch on. Things will start working, we switch off, things will start switching off. We don't even care whether there is a motor inside which rotates and takes out the air from one point A to point B. That's how IT is going to be. It's yet another tool for all the cross-sectional, uh, cross-functional, uh, you know, disciplines. Consequently, uh, you know, let's put IT as essential building block for the skill of tomorrow. It is given. It is, if you are not there, you are not going to be part of this whole uh, knowledge economy. You are going to be part of vocational skills. And vocational skills, I am not saying that they are not important. Probably they are more important than now the knowledge based skills because I, I know I am taking now apprentices because I feel very strongly about the point I made. And you will not believe they have performed much better than the engineers who are coming from IITs into certain jobs. They are putting their heart and soul, they are learning all these IP networking one week. They are learning how to install equipment. Another one week, 15 days, they are going and installing routers out there. They are going and maintaining all the large scale networks that we got to put all over. Wi Fi, village people are actually installing Wi Fi, knowing how to give the SSID, how to put these things, for which you will take uh, one month course. The point is, you have to give chairs to people, support them for a while, and that's what is my learning. The brightest students are available. Today, getting a security guard is more expensive than getting an apprentice, unfortunately. So, vocational skills and knowledge skills are the only two ways. Knowledge skills by challenging people, vocational skills by allowing them to work, and then actually Truly said, and I would think that uh, the electricity of digitization, as uh, appropriately put, I think it needs a great deal of public-private partnership. And we have seen few examples in the country. IIT Bombay, you know, taking the lead here and doing and leading a great digitization program across all the key uh, colleges at UG level, as well as reaching out to the schools where they have provided certain kind of digital skills and design programs which can be virtually taken. So I think that's a great uh, you know, development from the uh, government side, from the uh, public side. On the private side, I think you know, institutions and organizations like ICDL, they have, you know, of course, they cannot make the programs free, but they have kept very low cost programming and you know, they low, low cost programs which could go under the digital banner. And I think they have, in multiple countries, they're bringing this experience in, so I think this public-private uh, partnership is something which is the way forward. Uh, I would, you know, now kind of uh, ask a quick question to pull up again. That how is it that IIT Delhi, of course, IIT Bombay, taking few steps here already, and you are leading the cyber-physical space in a certain way within IIT Delhi? Do you think that this is something which can transcend easily? Because this is a complex skill. This is not an easy skill like digitization. So do you think that this is something which can easily transcend from a premium institution like uh, IIT Delhi to you know other institutions which may be you know pending for these needs and these skills? So uh, I was listening uh, actually he was trying to put the ground reality and some very interesting question now uh, being asked. Definitely, I'll say that uh, there's a need, sometimes I also feel a need that uh, the, the, these degrees and the kind of skill sets, uh, they're two different things and sometimes there's a need to delay them. Uh, like if you really try to see our education system, today we become happy when somebody says let's stay and let's focus on the certain skill this sets and I can excel in that particular area. But at the other hand, I see there's a big crowd for IIT Delhi also. So these two things are something you know which which contradict sometimes. So anyway, like this this uh, this uh, cyber network and security etc. Uh, along with like today as, as has been mentioned just now that uh, IT is going to come along with every subject today. So what is likely to happen, although this is not something uh, which is 
which is very easy because we have to transform our uh, syllabi and course curriculums from, from the bottom to the top. And once it happens, really in most cases, I believe that uh, what our uh, respected member was talking about, that is uh, going to become a uh, little easier for us also to take it ahead. But definitely, if you try to see, if you try to compare the, the kind of uh, education that is being imparted at our institution, at IIT level, at uh, different IITs, and if you see, try to compare it with other uh, colleges, you will find that uh, there's, a, there's a significant gap. And of course, uh, the, the the students are also uh, they are they are not that uh, motivated. In that they are not equal actually. Everybody has a different set of interests. Somebody can do some technical skill very good. Somebody is very good in management skill. Somebody is very good in some other kind of things. You know. But once we talk about you know, industry 4.0, you can see this creativity, which is actually the real time creativity, and the augmented creativity along with the various software or soft skills which we are acquiring today, it is really going to put forth a lot of challenge towards uh, in front of the, the the young generation or the youths because their visualization, their creativity. Their thought process have to be beyond that what is available with the you know uh, present uh, software skills. So here we we have to definitely start with the uh, critical uh, thinking, complex problem solving ability, creativity, management, coordinating with the others. There are emotional challenges, judgments and decision making, service orientation, negotiation, and of course the last one is most important that is called the cognitive flexibility. So uh, with these, I think uh, I'm stopping here. So in fact, Dr. Pandey, I have a few yeah. uh, you know leading questions from the same. So how is it that the digitization? Because if you look at the level of digitization, only about 25% of the Indian organizations claim, according to a PwC report, that you know they have any level of decent level of digitization. That means remaining 75% are actually not there. If we talk about educational institutions that number is even lesser in terms of training them. So how do you see that apart from digitization, these complex skills can actually seep in easily? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, like uh, it's a very relevant question for today. Uh, today, if we see our education system, we, we have started talking about the uh, pool-based system, you know, uh, which we call as outcome-based education. And today, I think the time has come when, when with the concept of industry 4.0 keeping in our mind, in our view, we have to design our curriculum in such a way that these kinds of skill sets are induced, they get generated while really the students are getting graduated uh, or post graduated from a uh, institution like maybe IIT or other engineering colleges of uh, our country. So, of course, uh, if we see uh, this, this uh, in, in case of mechanical engineering of IC or even in case of electronics, uh, Mr. Tyagi will definitely point out or support my, my, uh, my idea that uh, uh, we have uh, started uh, doing for last maybe 10 to 15 years, we have, we have started doing that. Actually, we, we are digitizing, the designs have been digitized. We are also trying to manufacture like the various PCBs, the various ICs, or maybe in case of mechanical engineering, various components. They are with produced through subtractive or maybe now with additive manufacturing too. But uh, there is a need, there is definitely a need that these things have to be integrated. So here, today, I mean, if we try to see the concept of industry 4.0, there's a, there's a need that we should integrate all the things and the various information which is present uh, uh, in, in various forms and definitely in different islands that have to be brought together, there has to be a communication, there has to be a, a cross link and of course there have to be algorithms which uh, try to dig out those in uh, the information in a very efficient manner and it should be able to you know operate our systems which are actually digital in nature in a very optimum way to deliver a product of a uh, very high quality with a required production. That's how you know our, our industry has to be sensitive. I would uh, move to Sushindra and to uh, Mr. Tyagi also in that order. Uh, because IIT of course is a very state of art uh, institution for the country and whatever happens there is already 
Dream Dell FM. So, you know, we already know that something good and great will come out of it. So, Shuchendra, if non IITs or institutions which are built here in the country, what do you think that? Do they have a chance? Do they stand a chance when it comes to digitization and spatial industry 4.0? Mm -hmm. Because one, I think uh, there's a big dream of the students which is not getting the right. So they, they are all over the place. You put training in the right. Even the state is back. You know, there are essentially three types of jobs that people who are getting a job there, especially the Indian university. Right? There are hand-based jobs, which are you know, hand-based or very skill-based jobs. So you could be, you know, possibly working in a uh, industry in a assembly line, and these are people who are either getting coming in from, you know, from mechanical engineering or engineering background, or from polytechnics and ITs in the formal education system. Now these were the first jobs which were lost because of the industry three percent with the automation happened. You know, most of these jobs either were automated, so the number of people getting jobs there were reduced. India, the next thing, it was the services sector, and this is. We will use the services of sourcing and things like that. Attempt to summarize that in a, a variety of points which we discussed. I would think that uh, we very well understood the concepts of uh, smart factory. Uh, what goes in and how that transition has happened from industry 2.0 to the current level. How that cyber physical space actually generates so much of data and information also. So keeping up with so much of data being able to deal with it, there are going to be a lot of complementary areas also like for example big data and analytics. So it's not just skilling in industry 4.0, it may be skilling around big data as well, analytics as well, information security as well because if we are talking of this much of wealth of information about you know uh, products and services, I think we very well uh, have responsibility towards securing that data also. Today morning itself we would have read about the Petya uh, attack which has happened which is a quick succession of the WannaCry attack which happened. And both these are new kinds of uh, inter, uh, inter, you know, um, uh, entry which is known as ransom attacks. So ransom attacks is something which is going to grow tremendously. So whether you want to be held ransom for what uh, state of art system we have created so I think there is great need for complementary services also to industry 4.0. So I think while digital skills are required in a particular silo of industry 4.0, it is also required in various other horizontals and industry-wide. If you have multiple industries, we may need that. And then we also learned about the multiple layers of you know uh, data aggregations and standards that are already being set. So I think we need to take cognition of a lot of these things and from the morning also we had few points flowing in. However, as far as the skills is concerned, complex decision making or complex thinking, I think how do we start inculcating not only at a very high UG level or a PG level, but it starts coming in at a school level or a senior school level where you know, you know that these are the kinds of skills which are going to possibly help us absorb technology in a better way and technology flows more like an electricity uh, around us. So when we have internet interconnected machines that can be virtually integrated and with augmented reality as well as human interface in real time. So they can be, you know, which can tell us about efficiency, efficiency slacks, they can tell us about possible downtimes, possible shifting, uh, bottlenecks which are there in the industry. They can tell us where the new demand centers exist. They can tell us about dynamic pricing. They can tell us when to purchase, when to not purchase. You are already facing crowdsourcing. So when you crowdsource data, a lot of information through Google Maps you are already uploading. And it's a physical system through which that data is generated. It gets aggregated at the uh, center and it helps in traffic reallocation. So your roads would be cleaner, you know, when you look at it. So we have machines talking to each other, we have machines talking to central and we have machines talking to human. So when all this happens, you know, essentially we say that every Tony Stark will have a Jarvis. So if every Tony Stark will have a Jarvis, maybe that still is little time away, at least every machine will have a Jarvis. So with that thought, I think, you know, we would like to thank the entire panel for participating in and respect, you could, you know, ask uh, our audience to put certain questions. In fact, Python, if you see in our Indian context, also many universities are doing a lot of experiments, particularly by the universities. It's a concept of meta universities. Many universities are following 